Hi, welcome to my studio. My name's Chris. It's the holidays, so let's paint holly leaves and berries. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome back to my studio. This is Chris. And in this uh, short tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to paint these holly leaves and berries. I thought it would be a good holiday topic since it is December and Christmas is only about seven days away. So I sh showed you here the reference image I'm using. This is a copyright free image from unsplash.com. I like to use Unsplash to find good images for painting. You can access it through a link that I will provide in the description below. All right, I'm going to get started here uh, with the background. As you can see, I'm painting kind of a grayed, muted violet color. And uh, this is Ultramarine Violet, I believe, by Daniel Smith with a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed in and um, real light wash. I'm trying to replicate the color of the sky that's showing through the leaves and um, in the background. I thought I'd drop in a little bit of ultramarine blue here just to make you think this is actually sky. Uh, you notice my colors are kind of um, coming down the paper, uh, flowing down because I have my paper sitting at about a 30 degree angle, which is pretty typical when I paint. Remember, gravity is one of the tools you use in watercolor. Just like a brush is a tool and your paper is an important uh, supply material, important part of the process, well, gravity is also important. And, and as you just watch here slowly, you can see the colors kind of blending on the paper. And um, by having it at a angle like this too, you can see that nice big um, bead of water that's at the bottom wherever I painted. And that's nice because that keeps the edge there along the bottom wet. So, um, as you proceed through the painting from top to bottom, and that's usually the way we paint the background, starting at the top, moving down. Uh, by keeping that bead of water at the bottom, it keeps the paint from drying and creating a hard edge. So you just have to be aware of that bead and move um, from left to right, covering the entire background and keeping that bead of, of water fresh before it dries again it creates a hard edge so that is why people um, put their watercolor paper at a slight angle and using gravity I I was really confused by that when I first started I thought it's watercolor and you, you can't have it be at an angle because the water you know uh, well d moves across the paper like that but that's exactly what you want it to do some people I've seen even paint at a steeper angle. Um, very steep, almost 90 degree. I honestly, I haven't tried that, but I think it would be a good exercise to give it a try and just see what happens there. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit just so you can see, I'm kinda just going through and uh, the colors I'm using here, uh, like I said, ultramarine violet, ultramarine blue. Then I use green gold and they're in the center, the light green. And now I'm taking the green gold and adding some ultramarine blue to it to create a darker green. So those are the colors I've used so far. Okay, now I have uh, let the paper dry completely. I like to just let it dry naturally uh, if I have the time, as opposed to using a uh, hair dryer. When you use a hair dryer, uh, you kind of can 
stop the natural process of the pigments um, getting fully saturated into the paper. Also, if you have granulated colors, which I do, like ultramarine blue, there's that those grains of pigment that you see, and they kind of slowly separate and create that granulating effect. And it takes a little bit of time. If you use a hair dryer prematurely, or um, you you can kind of stop that natural process of pigmentation in the paper. So I don't. I'm not saying that I never use a hair dryer. I do. Uh, sometimes, but you probably want to not use it right away as soon as you put the pigments on the paper. Give them a chance to settle in and kind of granulate and soak into the paper a little bit, and then you could use your hairdryer. All right, I've come back with yellow ochre now. This is the next color I'm using. I wanted a nice, strong yellow color here uh, for the uh, stem of the holly bush and the paper I guess actually now that I say it the paper is was still slightly wet when I started this it wasn't completely dry I know that because if I look there on the right where I put down the yellow ochre it uh, is kind of charging into the background colors because the background colors weren't completely dry when I applied it. I prefer in my first wash to do wet on wet for the entire, cover everything except for the highlights in that uh, first wash. So I'm only, the only place I'm not putting paint typically is in those highlights. And um, so when I do that, I'm going to result get a lot of um, Kind of blending of colors, charging in, soft edges, things like that. You're really just putting down the general colors of the areas that you want to define and you're uh, expecting to have very uh, soft edges. Now, I decided here that I wanted, there were some uh, berries in the background and so I thought, you know, I'm going to just take some alizarin crimson and drop them, drop it into the background. Again, the background on the top area anyways was pretty wet and so when I put alizarin crimson it just bloomed out it just uh, charged into the background creating a really nice soft edge I like that <laughs> but as you see as I started doing the same thing in the bottom third of the paper it didn't do that so there's different levels of wetness and dryness in the paper at this point the bottom parts are more dry which is a little strange to me because I painted that last so you think it'd still be wet, but the amount of water you use when you do the wash, etc., all those things affect how wet the paper is. To get good at watercolor, you really have to be aware of the wetness of your paper at all times. And in addition, you need to know how much water is on your brush, how much pigment, um, and again, how wet the paper is, and because all of those factors will have a huge effect about of how the pigment, how the paint reacts to the paper. And so you can see the difference between the first little bit of red that I put down where it was quite wet and spread out, and then these other attempts here, which are not so much. Now, uh, I know that these little spots, these little berries, background berries are going to dry quite a bit lighter than what you see here and so I'm not too worried about it they won't really attract too much attention uh, by the time I'm done I'm just adding a few more because wherever the berries are in the background there's usually several berries together I'm gonna speed this up a little bit Okay, the last thing I need to do now in this first wash is the berries and the leaves, which of course are a very important part of this painting, the main subject of the painting. So I've taken my alizarin crimson, a very light wash of that, a nice diluted concentration of that, 
and I'm painting carefully each berry. I'm trying to retain a white dot on each berry, which represents a highlight glint of light. Uh, the light is coming from the upper right hand corner in this composition. And so I'm gonna go ahead and paint those. As you see here, I'm gonna speed the painting up a little bit as this is pretty repetitive. Now I move on to painting the leaves. Holly leaves are a very dark green color. However, again, I'm in my first wash, and so I'm not going to apply a real dark color at this point. I'm going instead to take some sap green, which I have here, and just go ahead and put down an initial wash of the green color and define these three leaves. You might notice that I took some liberties with the reference image and added a third leaf, rearranged the berries a little bit. I'm not really following the reference image slavishly. Uh, and that is usually the case. I usually use a reference image simply as a inspiration, a loose uh, reference. I use it to kind of get a sense of you know, what my subject looks like in real life, get a sense for the colors, but I usually will take it and adapt it a bit, trying to achieve a better composition. Now I take a little darker application of the sap green. I think I may have actually mixed a little bit of the ultramarine blue into this color at this point, but uh, now I'm doing a wet on wet application of this darker mixture of the green. And as you can see, I'm just dropping it in along the edges of the leaves. Since these leaves uh, kind of a uh, tend to be a little darker on the edges, trying to retain the sharp points of these and just lay down some other colors, allowing the water and the water color to just do its thing. Now I've noticed that there is some white highlight running down the center of each of these leaves. It's really where the veins of the leaves are. And so I'm taking a synthetic stiff brush it's actually an angled brush and I'm it's slightly wet but clean uh, really not too wet at all just just a little bit damp but no paint on it and I'm using it to lift which is a really important technique you want to get good at lifting a lot of people think that when you put paint down on paper with watercolor it's there and you've stained your paper you can't do anything about it but that is not true most good watercolor pigments actually can be lifted and even after they've dried, they can be lifted. So uh, experiment with that technique some. Now the paper is completely dry. I walked away for a while and let it dry naturally. And now I'm coming back with a little different red. This is a pyrrole red. I believe it's an M. Graham color. And it is a bright, more opaque color than the Elysium Crimson, and this is also a very intense mixture of it. So I'm just going to go around and paint each of the berries with this real bright color, being careful to leave the highlight. You'll notice later in the video I actually end up kind of painting over those highlight glints, and so I end up at the end having to go back with some um, with a white gel pen which I do from time to time if I want to just put in little dots of white. So even though I had all my efforts here to try and keep the white glints there, it uh, failed in the end. And <laughs> it 
but uh, and that was mostly because I was really trying to blend the red and soften it and so in order to do that I ended up kind of scrubbing over these areas lifting colors and all that and by the time I got done those little white areas were gone but it was not too big of a problem because I was able to fix it later all right now I am taking my brush it's clean and it's just damp and I've got paper towel in my one hand and I'm just cleaning the brush and just uh, lifting uh, paper lifting pigment and removing it from the brush onto the paper towel and just doing that over and over and I'm lifting that and you can see that I'm creating more of a gradual change of color um, so that I don't have just such an intense red all over on the berries um, these types of berries are very red in real life they're very brilliant in color and so I, I do want that bright red but I also want to emphasize the shape of the berry a little bit the roundness of it by um, creating a little half tone kind of gradual change in colors uh, to emphasize the roundness All right, now I have mixed up some ultramarine blue with the pyrrole red, creating a very dark, almost black color. And I am going to paint on the lower left-hand side of each berry, which is on the opposite side of the light source. And again, if you look at the reference, these berries are almost black in color, kind of a purpley black on this shadow side. So I'm trying to replicate that. I'm gonna just lay down the color and just uh, spots of color here and then I will come back as I'm doing here with the, the brush clean of pigment and just damp and now and then just lifting up or blending in the color I don't want it to be too hard of an edge so I'll once I get the color on there I'll come back and soften it The next step is to work on the leaves. This area is completely dry, so I've now mixed up a much darker mixture of sap green with ultramarine blue. I'm looking for a bluish cast to these green, these leaves, because they are in um, real life. Holly leaves have a bluish green color to them. Now. This takes me a while to do these leaves. I'm, I'm not super happy with what I do here initially. I kind of lay down the color and the shapes a little off and all that. And also as I go along, I'm gonna realize that the edges are a little too hard. So like I'm doing here right now, I'm getting my brush wet and just coming in along the edge um, with a clean brush that's wet I tip the, I touch the tip of the brush right up against that paint and it causes it to blur into the background. I really like soft edges in my watercolor. And in order to get that, um, you, uh, you wanna blur and, and um, those edges. And of course the background's already dry and I'm, so I'm painting wet on dry. So it won't do that naturally and so I have to kind of coax it Again, by wet brush, along, touching along the edge of the painted area and drawing that pigment out into the dry areas. So I do that quite a bit in here. I kind of fuss around with these. This will drop some blue, as you can see, in the um, 
kind of right hand side of this leaf um, again because I want more of a bluish green then I decided it was a little too dark so now I'm taking my brush and lifting I'm always looking for a real transparency I don't like real opaque colors and so when I first put this green down on all of these leaves it tends to be pretty opaque and so then I'm kind of once I lay the pigment down then I kind of back up and add a variety of colors like I'm doing blue right here and then I even go back and lift or blur the edges so I kind of do that process over and over again on all three of these um, leaves now I'm also taking the end the wrong end of my one of my brushes and it's got a pointed end, end to it and I'm just scraping uh, along the veins the center vein and some of the other veins in the leaf to create marks so using your brush is not the only way the, using the bristles of the brush is not the only way to use a brush you can also use the um, other end of the brush to, to scrape and scratch uh, and create marks. You can use your fingernail to do that. You can use the edge of a credit card. You can use any sharp object if you want. Um, some people use exacto knives. You have to be careful. You can really damage the paper, but some people want to damage the paper a little bit. So um, there's just such a variety of techniques. It, it is art, you know, and so uh, there aren't there are rules but they're kind of also it's like whatever you want to try is fair game all right so I'm putting down this third leaf softening the edges I'll come back and put in some more blue and I, I keep going back and forth from one leaf to the other kind of looking at it seeing the effects I'm getting seeing if I like it or not and just kind of playing around with it using the techniques I've described earlier Okay, to add a little bit of interest to these berries, I have decided to take a little bit of my Azo, sorry, um, it's a um, New Gamboge, which is kind of an orangey yellow. And I'm just putting in a little bit of contrasting or, or different color here, this kind of uh, New Gamboge colors. Just kind of experimenting with different colors. And I uh, put it on there and now I'm just kind of softening the edges of that color addition. Next I'm going to come in and take a little bit of darker color, I think a burnt umber, and uh, just put a little bit of definition on the bottom side of the stem. Actually, first I put some more um, yellow ochre along the top of the stem and then come back and put the burnt umber uh, along the bottom side. As you're painting, you always want to remember that the eye is drawn to the places of highest contrast and values. Uh, and so by placing a little bit darker color there along the edge of the stem, it kind of caused a bit more contrast. It tends to make it pop a little bit. Still coming back now and softening the edges of some of those leaves even more.
All right, I'm really uh, liking this now, and I'm getting close to being done. Uh, I've decided I'm going to take and splatter a little bit, uh, so I, I wasn't filming all of that process, but here I am spattering with some of the yellow ochre. I spattered red and blue simply by putting a nice, strong concentration of pigment on the brush and tapping it against the handle of another brush and uh, getting a nice splatter effect which I thought would add a bit to this painting. Okay, last but not least, I need to come back and re kind of find those highlights again on the berries. I mentioned earlier that I had initially left them without pigment, left the white of the paper, and then I lost that white of the paper due to kind of working on the shape of the berries. So now I'm taking a gel pen, which uh, technically, I guess, makes this a multimedia painting now, not just watercolor, <laughs> because this gel pen is not watercolor. Um, I'm not a purist. I don't worry about that too much. And uh, so I'm just putting a little white dot there on at least most of the berries, the ones that are not in deep shadow, and I think that adds a bit there. Okay, I'm happy with this painting. I'm going to add my signature in the lower right corner and call it good. Want to be careful when you put your signature in. I like to use a really diluted color. I don't want it to be too strong. Of course, it'll dry even lighter than what you see here. I try to pick a color similar to the carrier area that where I'm painting the signature, so it kind of doesn't kind of blends in. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this painting, this holiday-themed holly berries and leaves on a muted background. If so. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel and uh, hit that notification bell so that you are notified every time I make a and post a new video. And uh, I usually get a video out about once a week. I have tutorials like this as well as product reviews for watercolor and other various videos that just share my journey in watercolor. At the time of this filming, I've been painting a lot for about two years now. I've learned a lot in that time. I'm not an expert. I don't uh, know everything there is to know about watercolor, but I'm willing to share my journey and uh, my process and my techniques and uh, even my mistakes. So again, I hope you found this helpful. If so, we'll see you next time.